welcome back student now today we will uh, have a lecture 5 of the same chapter that is the plant life this is the fifth part of the same chapter that is the plant life now in this uh, lecture in this video we are going to study the fertilization in flowering plant okay so uh, what is fertilization how does it takes place and when does it take place we will all study this thing in this lecture so fertilization in the flowering first of all see this diagram okay see so, uh, fertilization is the next step after the pollination it takes place when the pollination is completed when the pollination takes place then after the pollination fertilization takes place okay so when the pollination is complete see pollination you i think you must have revised the previous lecture the previous video in which we have studied the uh, pollination in detail okay so what was what is pollination pollination means the transfer of the pollen grains from the anther to the stigma okay this was a simple definition of the pollination that the transfer of the pollen grain will take place from the anther to the stigma okay so um, when pollination is completed of that means after the pollen grain has reached the stigma of the flower it will start germinating over there pollen grain will start germinating on the stigma then after uh, germinating in the uh, stigma it will produce a pollen tube you can see in this diagram that yellow color tube is arising from the pollen grain okay so it produces a pollen tube this pollen tube will run all the way through the style and goes up to the ovary part you must have remember you must have revised the same that the carpel of the pistil is divided into three parts stigma style and ovary stigma pollen grain reaches over the stigma it germinates in the stigma and then it produces a pollen tube which will run all the way through the style and reaches up to the ovary okay now this pollen tube is carrying the male cells male reproductive cell or the male gametes inside the pollen tube it elongates pollen tube will elongate through the style and will reach the ovary then inside the ovary what is there the ovule is present inside the ovary okay you can see in this diagram in this uh, slide that the ovule is present inside the ovary and this ovule it contains the female cells or the female gamete or the female reproductive cells okay so when the pollen tube reaches the ovule what will happen over there it will burst open pollen tube will burst open and it will release the male cell male gamete or male all the male or the male reproductive cell which what will happen over there um, then this male cell will fuses with the female cell okay male cell will fuses with the female cell and where this fusion is taking place it is taking place inside the ovule okay so now at this stage we can this thing uh, okay this is just a recap of what we have this thing done in the previous slide it step by step i prepared this for you this slide see in this slide all the steps are given how fertilization takes place once the pollination is complete next step is the fertilization pollen grain reaches the stigma of the flower it produces a pollen tube pollen tube carries the male cells it elongates through the style and reaches the ovary the ovule inside the ovary contains a female cell when the pollen tube reaches the ovule it bursts and releases the male cell and now over here male cell fuses with the female cell now you can define what is fertilization the fusion of the male cell with the female cell to form the zygote is called fertilization what is fertilization the fusion of the male cell with the female cell to form the zygote is called fertilization okay 
in this slide also it is just a recap of this thing again the same thing pollen grains reaching the stigma germinating over there producing the pollen tube pollen tube is carrying the male cell running all the way through the style reaching the ovary inside the ovary ovule is present ovule is carrying the female cell pollen tube is carrying the male cell inside the ovule pollen tube burst open male cell is released which fuses with the female cell over there inside the ovule and this fusion is called as a fertilization and after the fusion of the male cell and the female cell what happen a zygote is formed okay a zygote is formed okay so now what after the fertilization once the fertilization is over what will happen what changes will take place inside the flower see first of all after the for after once pollination is take, uh, is done fertilization is done then first thing that the sepals and the petals of the flowers that is the calyx and the corolla brightly colored corolla petals and green colored sepals okay they all will wither off they will fall off they all will wither off and they will fall off okay then ovary will become the fruit that ovary where the fertilization was taking place fusion of the male cell female cell it will become the fruit and the ovule will become the seed this is very very important all these points you must remember by heart you all have to you have to learn all these points by heart okay ovary will become the fruit ovule will become the seed zygote will become the embryo or baby plant okay zygote will become the embryo or baby plant ovary wall will become the fruit wall the walls of the ovary it will changes into the fruit wall what is fruit what is fruit wall this all we will do in the upcoming slides okay wall of the ovule will become the seed coat and sepals and the petals they usually wither off fall off but in certain fruits what will happen the sepals they do not wither off the sepals do not wither off for example in the brinjal chili and the uh, tomato uh, fruit the sepals do not wither off and they persist okay that green colored part um in the brinjal uh, which we usually cut off and throw it away is a sepal so this kind of sepal is called as a persistent calyx okay persistent calyx okay now after this thing when the fertilization takes place fusion takes place zygote is formed now the zygote is going to become into the embryo the baby plant and the ovary wall will become the fruit wall now we will start with our next part of this thing that is fruit in fruit what we have to study we have to study its type although only one type of the fruit is given in your syllabus in your uh, this thing uh, course and it parts we will study in the detail so first of all you now at this stage you must able to define that what is fruit okay so what is fruit first of all a very very easy definition of the fruit that it is a ripened ovary fruit is a ripened ovary after fertilization the ovary of the flower ripens to form the fruit okay it ripens to form the fruit that is why the fruit is also called as a ripened ovary okay a product of the flower usually develop as a result of the flower being pollinated it is referred to as a ripened ovary and its primary or the main function of the fruit is to distribute seed to new areas where the plant might grow okay we will start with the structure of the fruit a means a common structure um, of the fruit a fruit is composed of the pericarp and the seed fruit is divided into this thing consists of two major parts okay fruit consists of two major parts the pericarp pericarp is also called as the fruit wall ovary wall changes into the fruit wall now that fruit wall or the ovary wall is now termed as the pericarp so pericarp is a fruit wall okay and the seed so fruit is made up of two part that is a pericarp 
which is also the fruit wall or the ovary wall and the seed now see this uh, slide this diagram everything it's a very very uh, self explanatory diagram see this thing a fruit picture is given pericarp which we eat okay or usually we peel it off huh? and the seed is inside that pericarp okay seed is inside in the middle okay okay so structure pericarp is a ovary wall hmm, or the fruit wall which surrounds the seed it has three main regions okay fruit wall uh, the pericarp uh, is a fruit wall which develops from the wall of the ovary and it is formed of the three layers or we can say that it has three regions exocarp or epicarp exocarp you can call it as exocarp or epicarp both are the same meaning mesocarp and the endocarp so exocarp or the epicarp it is the thin dry outer skin of the fruit which we usually peel it off okay so ex exocarp or the epicarp it's a first portion that is an outer one it's a usually thin dry and outer part of the fruit then mesocarp it's a middle portion which we eat as a pulp okay it's a thick fleshy middle layer which usually forms a pulp of the fruit okay then endocarp it's an innermost hard layer of the fruit that encloses or contains the seed okay what is endocarp it's a thin inner part it's an innermost hard layer which encloses the seed or contains the seed so peric seed has two main part pericarp and the seed pericarp is divided into three layers three parts exocarp or epicarp mesocarp and endocarp epicarp it's an outer layer mesocarp it's a middle layer and endocarp it's an innermost layer Ep epicarp outermost layer it's a thin dry outer skin mesocarp it's a thick fleshy which eat which we eat as a pulp and endocarp it's an innermost layer and which is the most hard hard okay hard layer and which contains the seed inside it diagram of the mango it's a typical diagram it's a typical uh, that mango has all the three parts of the pericarp seed everything and it's very very easy to understand also see this diagram of the mango and next time when you are going to eat the mango first trace it out all the three parts of the pericarp and you also must trace out the seed inside the endocarp okay so see in this diagram exocarp that is usually the skin of the mango which we peel it off and throw away then the mesocarp that is a pulp orange yellow colored pulp which we eat then the endocarp which we commonly called as a gutli gutli of the mango okay that's a hard hard layer huh? innermost hard layer endocarp and if you take uh, that um, crush this endocarp okay or you make a longitudinal section of this endocarp then you can see the seed inside that endocarp okay inside the endocarp is the seed present of the mango this diagram also one more slide of the fruit that is the exocarp again pericarp and the seed the structure of the seed structure of the fruit it has two part pericarp and the seed seed is inside the endocarp then mesocarp is a middle one fleshy pulp and exocarp is an outer dry thin skin of the fruit okay classification of the fruit only one type of classification of the fruit is in your syllabus although there are 100 types of fruits okay but you have to study only this one in your syllabus in class 6th okay true fruit and the false fruit true fruit is that fruit which is formed by the ovary of the fruit and best example of the true fruit is the mango which we have seen the diagram in the previous slide okay it's a fruit that is formed by the ovary when the ovary of the fruit is converted 
getting converted into the fruit that type of fruit is called as a true fruit and if the fruit is formed from some other part of the flower okay not from the ovary but some other part of the flower is giving rise to the fruit then that type of fruit is called as a false fruit example is a apple which part how this is not in your syllabus so don't okay get a uh, go after this thing you just learn this thing that the true fruit what is a true fruit and the false fruit true fruit is that fruit which is formed by the ovary of the fruit false fruit is that part is the fruit that is formed from some any other part of the flower but not from the ovary true fruit example is a mango and false fruit example is a apple thing a fruit if we do not do the functions of the fruit that will not complete our uh, this thing portion of the fruit so now you can also uh, tell that what are the functions of the fruit first of all very very important and the prime function of the fruit is to protect the seeds from where what from the adverse condition it is giving a container it is protecting the seed okay then it also helps in the dispersal of seeds so what is dispersal how it takes place we will do it in the upcoming uh, this thing lectures okay then fruit store food and it is also a very very good source of numerous vitamins okay many many vitamins are many types of vitamins are present in the fruit also okay so what are the functions of the fruit fruit helps it to protect the seeds from adverse conditions fruits help in dispersal of seeds and fruits store food and are good source of vitamins okay lecture stay at home stay safe but it's my humble request to you all that you please 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 revise all the slides all the previous lectures previous videos if you will not revise then you will not understand what we are going to study in the uh, coming videos okay so please boys please students please revise all the previous five videos uh what we have done earlier in this chapter because it's a very very big chapter and it's difficult also so please revise and practice the diagram at home okay thank you all of you